hello friends welcome back to today's class so today we will start with your next topic which is called as subroutines so subroutines you might be hearing the word first time but you might have already heard the word called as functions especially in your higher level programming that is c language what you have studied in your first year you might have already heard of the word called as functions so what does a function do then a function is nothing but whenever i want to perform a specific task like say for example i am doing a program of calculator then it might so happen that i have to do n number of functions that is addition subtraction multiplication division and so on then to in order to perform each task what we'll be doing is we'll be going back to our functions okay so whenever like so say for example i want to perform an addition then what we do the addition program is written as a sub program of a main program that is say for example you will take up the two numbers a and b then what you do you uh, you go ahead and you say i want to add these numbers so if i want to add these numbers you will write a function called as add underscore and no number okay then what will happen the execution would be passing to the function that is add underscore and no okay then this type of thing is called as a function similar to that you have something called as subroutines subroutines is especially used whenever we are dealing with your assembly language programming so whenever i try to write an assembly level language program in that case we will be using our subroutine so you can see the first point here it is nothing but it is a subtask now i like say for example a block of instructions which is usually called a subroutine so as i told you say i want to perform mathematical function or say i want to sort on a list of numbers then i will be using this subroutines usually what would happen is whenever i try to do this execution that is subroutine we need to save the instruction that is what is the last step i was executing and that step has to be saved of the main program so if i want to save the last step of the main program then you require space in your memory then any program that requires the use of the subroutine will simply call it from that particular location and it will use it so whenever a program branches to a subroutine we say that it is calling the subroutine that is it is fetching the subroutine okay friends so the instruction that performs this branch operation is called a call instruction so you can see here this is the instruction which is which will be used to perform your call so a call instruction is nothing but wherein you will be calling a subroutine so if i want to call a subroutine we say that it is a call instruction so whenever i will be calling the subroutine we should always store the contents of the program counter so program counter is something which will be tracking where the program is presently executing so if i want to store it then i will be using your program counter register okay so you can say that whenever a subroutine has been executed the calling program will resume the execution only after immediately finishing the execution of the subroutine so therefore once the subroutine has finished its execution it has to again return back to its main program in that case you require one more instruction called as a return instruction so it is like friends say assume you are in your home and uh, what will be uh, and say you are studying uh, say you are at page number 15 then suddenly your mother tells you to go and get something from the shop then what will be doing at page number 15 you need to store something you need to keep something therefore that is nothing but storing the program counter then you will go fetch the uh, thing which your mom has told you and you'll come back and the coming back is nothing but your return address the going or the when the when when your mother calls you that is nothing but your call instruction so when you do your call and return what you need to do you need to store where you had where you had stopped studying so page number 15 you had stored when when you are going to the shop and when you come back where you come back you again come back to the page number 15 itself so therefore even return instruction what it does once it comes back to the main instruction it comes to the same address so therefore you can say in order to do this linking 
we need to store the address and that address is stored in a register called as link register okay friends so always remember friends this subroutine may be called from different places especially when you have a calling program it could be called from different places and we need to make provisions to move to the different locations so the location where the calling of the program resumes the execution this is called as the this would be updated in your program counter so program counter is very essential in this whole task fine friends now the next very important thing we need to understand is what is subroutine linkage so what is subroutine linkage then so it is a way in which a computer makes it possible to call and return from a subroutine so the simplest subroutine linkage method we have is nothing but to save the return address in a specific location which may be a register again and this register again we call it as a link register so so when the subroutine completes its task the return instruction returns to the calling program and this happens usually by branching through the link register okay friends so subroutine linkage is nothing but what you are doing you will be trying to make a call and return from the subroutine so this process of making a call and returning from the subroutine is nothing but your subroutine linkage method so in order to do this what do you require you require a link register so friends what all did we study in today's class then in today's class we learned that subroutines is nothing but it is a subtask and in order to execute this subtask we require two important instructions which are nothing but your call instruction and return instruction and where do you store these values these values are stored inside a program counter okay and in order to do this mechanism that is call and return we require a register wherein we will be storing our addresses and to do this possibility this process whatever you want to do that process is called as subroutine linkage so i hope this whole slide is clear wherein we have completed all your points okay now what are the things your call instruction does that is another very major thing which we need to see now so the call instruction is usually it is a special branch instruction which performs a few of the operations to name a few that is to name from very important it stores the contents of the pc where it stores it stores the content of the pc in the link register and the other very important thing it does is it will branch to the target address which is been specified by the call instruction so therefore your call instruction does two very major things one is it will store the contents of the program counter in the link register second is it will branch to the target address which is specified by the call instruction so these are the two important things which your call instruction does you can see that in this below figure now once your subroutine has been called what happens now the memory location 200 from the memory location in the memory location 200 you have your subroutine okay so once it has been called the next instruction whatever the value of the next instruction will be there that will be stored inside your pc which is nothing but your program control counter program counter okay then after storing the value that is 204 of the next instruction inside your pc the same value is also updated in your link register so that when your main program again resumes it has to see your link register okay friends so once it has been called it will jump to memory location 1000 and inside memory location 1000 what we have we have your subroutine thereby the subroutine starts executing so once the execution has been finished it will reach your return instruction and what your return instruction will do it will again go back to pc it will check where was the last instruction which was the last instruction executed and it will see that the number the memory value which is stored here is 204 and again it will start execution from 204 okay friends so therefore what your return instruction does then it it the one very important thing is it will contain the address which is there in the link register and it will branch to that specific address so it will what it will do it will branch to the specific address which is written inside your link register 
okay friends so i hope this whole diagram is clear whatever we have done here okay so next very important thing we'll be having is your stack frame so what is the stack frame so what happens usually is what we are saying now we should have a link register so it's it becomes very difficult to have this link registers inside your processors and most of our processor architectures doesn't support more of the link registers that is i cannot have some 50 100 200 link registers so in order to avoid that what we will be doing is we'll be using your stack frame so stack frame is something wherein you will be storing your content so whatever the work your link register was doing the same the same work your stack frame will be doing so what it does it it is nothing but a private workspace and this private workspace is used for the subrouting and what is the use of this it is used whenever we want to store and fetch your values that is from the link register what we used to do we used to store our value of the memory location similarly here in your sub stack frame what we will be doing we will be storing the value of the program counter so therefore this is you created at the time the subroutine is entered and freed when the subroutine returns so whenever you call your subroutine it gets created the stack frame and when you move out of the subroutine when the execution is over thus this stack frame is freed up okay friends next what is this frame pointer then the frame pointer is nothing but it is used to access the local variables of the subroutine so program counter is something what now it is pointing to the instructions of the programmer what is frame pointer then it is used to point the variables inside the subroutine okay so that is the difference between your frame pointer and program counter okay so this is all about your stack frame going to the next very important thing which is nothing but your subroutine nesting so nesting what does the word nesting tells you it is nothing but one subroutine inside a another subroutine okay so it is a very common practice in most of our uh, programmings wherein one subroutine subroutine would call another subroutine you can understand like one function would call another function so therefore what is required then in this case the return address of the second call has to be stored in your link register and what care we have to take this second address should not overwrite the previous contents that has to be maintained as usual else if we don't say what would happen we cannot return back to the main program we can return back to the subroutine which has been called by another subroutine but we cannot return back to the main program so therefore we need to store the register sorry the store the address of both the main program which has been called by the subroutine and the subroutine which has been called by another subroutine and the care we have to take is what now we should not erase the previous addresses from the registers okay now this subroutine i told you just of two steps but it might happen to any depth so therefore eventually what is important then the last subroutine which has been called it computes and returns the subroutines that called it so therefore the return address needed for the subroutine for needed for the first return is the last one generated it is something like uh, first in last out that is the return address will consist of first return which has been generated at the last so that is the return address are generated and used in last in first out order that is l f l i f o we call it lifo whatever the last address has been generated will be taken out first and whatever the first address has been generated will be taken out last so you can observe here in the diagram so subroutine 1 is calling subroutine 2 subroutine 2 is calling subroutine 3 so therefore we should first what you should store then we should store the return address of subroutine 3 then we should store the return address of subroutine 2 and finally we should store the return address of subroutine 1 so sorry for the uh, typing mistake there it has to be subroutine return address of subroutine 1 not 3 the last one i am speaking okay so this is how your subroutine nesting takes place you can just go through this diagram here you can see you have a main program you have a subroutine 1 and then you have a subroutine 2 so what is happening here then the main program is calling your subroutine 1 and the subroutine 1 is calling your subroutine 2 
so below there in the below in the below diagram you can find out you have something called as a stack so what is the stack doing there the stack you know already it is we go on st stacking there okay that is first in whatever the uh, you can see first what it, it should do now the stacks has been covered in detail in the previous uh, videos you can just have a look at those videos and uh, you will understand in detail what actually is stack so you can just observe this figure now what is happening subroutine one has been called once the subroutine one has been called you can find out the stack has been updated with the address of 121 next what would happen what is happening the subroutine two is called so once the subroutine two has been called you can see the stack has been updated with the new address which is 231 and one thing to notice here friends they are not erased they are not overlapped they are one above the other okay now while going back while going back which is the first address we require first we know, need to go to subroutine one then from subroutine one we need to go to main that means first address we need to store is what now 231 from 231 we will be going to 131 so that's why you can see there 130 121 is below 231 it is like say for example you are reaching a particular building which has some two gates First you cross the first gate, next you will be crossing the second gate, you will reach your building, right? Then, while coming back, which is the first gate you will be coming across? The first gate you will be coming across is the second gate which you have crossed and then you will be coming across your first gate. So that is how you will be reaching back to your source. So friends, I hope the subroutine nesting has been clear. Okay. So the next topic will be additional instructions and uh, this will be dealt in the next class and maybe this will be dealt by uh, Niranjan sir so here I will be uh, topping my stopping my class thank you for watching if you have any doubts you can just whatsapp me or call me on my number thank you for watching thank you